Welcome to The Problem Was Me. I'm your host, Tom Gagliano. I'm a best-selling author, family dynamics expert, and social worker. And we'll be discussing childhood messages and their impact on addiction, the intimacy we have or don't have, our parenting skills, the careers we choose, even the roles we're set up to play in life. Do you put other people's needs ahead of your own? Do you have a hard time sharing your feelings? Do you feel invisible? Do you have a hard time saying no to others? Do you have an inner voice screaming for help, but yet you're so afraid of allowing others to hear this voice? Well, you've come to the right show. I'll be touching upon these issues and much more from my personal and professional experiences to help you end the negative self-talk and take your life to a new level. The problem was me starts now. Hi, everyone. Welcome to The Problem Was Me. With me, Tom Gagliano. I'm your host. So today we're going to be talking about holiday stress. We all have holiday stress. We run around. We get stuck in traffic, trying to buy this, buy that, get there on time. It's stressful, but we're going to talk about a different kind of stress today. We're going to talk about going back to a family of origin during the holidays and the roles we were set up to play early on in our life that we're still playing as an adult. They're very ingrained and they're very powerful. So let's touch on that. We're going to discuss childhood messages and the way those messages have trained us to play certain roles, even sometimes roles we don't want to play. How are these roles affecting those around us? How does it affect us? We're going to talk about the challenges in changing these roles, and it's not easy. So we're going to talk about all of this stuff because, look, at the end of the day, our caregivers – our parents showed us how to view the world and how the world viewed us. So they were very instrumental in creating the roles that we play in our adult life, like the people pleaser, like the caretaker role. A lot of these roles are set up early on by our childhood messages. I want you to ask yourself, are you playing the role you want to play or are you playing the role you were set up to play? You have to answer that. If you're happy in the role you're playing, that's fine. But if you want to tweak it or change it, Welcome to this podcast. Let's talk about how to do that. Let's talk about the challenges associated with changing some of these roles and how we can overcome it. So I'm going to talk about five different roles in the beginning of the podcast. We're going to talk about these roles that were set up to play. And then after the break, we're going to come back and talk about how to change these roles if indeed you want to change them. Many of us need to change the role we're playing. But unless we want to, we're not going to change it. So if you want to, Stay tuned. So let's talk about the people pleaser. Those of us that can't say no, we say yes all the time because somewhere, somehow, that's there's an inner voice in us telling us that we're bad people if we say no, like we're hurting others if we say no. And we get selfishness and self-care confused. Sometimes we need to say no to take care of ourselves, but there's an inner voice coming from childhood saying, if you say no, you're being selfish. We got to figure out the difference between selfishness and self-care. Why, when we feel no, we feel like, say no, I'm sorry, we feel like we're doing something wrong when we're not. And how does that affect those around us, our spouse, our partner, when we constantly people please other people and maybe we're neglecting them a little bit? Not saying that's happening to you, but I know some people listening to this, it is happening to. Number two, caretaker role. That's the need to take care of everybody else. Sometimes forgetting we need to take care of ourselves. Where does that come from? Well, many times we feel like we have to control everything or it's not going to come out right. Something wrong is going to happen. And caretaking becomes very, very tiring. Believe me, it does. I know I have that in me. And one of the problems with people that are caretakers is we don't know how to ask for help. We only know how to take care of others. And what makes a voice feel so guilty again, like the people please is similar, that if we don't take care of others, we're doing something wrong. And many times we're not helping them by taking care of them. In fact, we're hurting them. We need to make people responsible for the things they need to be responsible for. But we got to work on our end first, letting go of being the caretaker and the control that's involved with that. And whatever happens, happens comes from a fear really inside that if I don't take care of things, bad things are going to happen. Let's go to the perfectionist role. 
Those of us that never give ourselves a break. Those of us that never celebrate our victories. We only run to the next dilemma all the time. No compassion for ourselves. It's, everything's black and white. Either I'm perfect or I'm a failure. Again, coming from childhood, where in many instances, we felt we couldn't make mistakes or we were a mistake. We couldn't fail at anything or we were a failure. Could be a tough childhood. Could it be genetics? But something inside of us is telling us if we're not perfect, then we fail. And we go back to our family of origin, caretaker, people pleaser, perfectionist. And those wounds or those triggers go on steroids. So now let's talk about the defiant role. Come on, you know people like that. Many of us want to throw the turkey leg at people that are defiant, right? We go to family and friends, but we don't get along with everybody. Defiant role of people that are never there on time. You tell them seven, they get there at eight. They tell you, make it at nine and then get there at 10. They always have to be right all the time. Now, if you play that defiant role, and usually it comes from a childhood where you had a lot of control, where you really felt your feelings didn't matter. That's why you're always in a fist fight to be right. If you want to change that, because if you always want to be right, you're only going to push people away. Choose closeness instead. But you got to pause. You got to work on that. That's the defiant role. What about the invisible role? Many of us came from big childhoods where we lost our voice. We became invisible. We don't know how to share our feelings. We want to, but we don't know how. And when we do, it's very, very uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable. How do you take back your voice? You deserve to be heard. But you may not know how to do that. Or well, you may feel like if you're doing that again, that inner voice is telling you you're doing something wrong. All of these roles that we were set up to play, if you want to change them, you have to work on certain things that I'm going to introduce. I've helped a lot of folks change the roles that they were set up to play in childhood. Many of them took, learned, uh, uh, bought my book, The Problem Was Me, and I talk about three key areas, self-awareness, I have to know how I'm showing up. I got to know what I have to work on. If I go to the doctor and I tell the doctor, work on my foot when it's my shoulder, that's the problem. Not again anywhere. We have to build self-awareness first. With self-awareness, it teaches us what actions we need to take. And if we maintain those actions consistently now, you can't do it once in a while if you want to change your role. You can change the role you were set up to play. In a nutshell, without awareness, I don't know what actions to take. And with act without actions, there's really nothing to maintain. So those are the three keys that I talk about in my book to help you change the role that you were set up to play. Don't underestimate the power of these roles. They're very ingrained. Our childhood messages unleash a tsunami of inner voices, thoughts, ideas that permeate our thinking that we carry throughout our whole life. It's very, very powerful. And when we go against what we're hearing inside of our head, the role where we should be playing, somehow we get negative messages, messages inside. Somebody who's a people pleaser can't win. If they say yes when they want to say no, they're not going to like who they see in the mirror. And then if they say no, they're going to feel like I'm a bad person. I shouldn't have did this. I'm, I'm wrong. I'm selfish. It's a tough situation to be in. Either way, you're going to have the negative messages. Caretakers too. To let go of taking care of others, make them responsible is very difficult because you're going to be afraid that things aren't going to turn out right. Only I can do this. But at the end of the day, you're going to get really tired of caretaking. And asking for help is not something you're comfortable with. You know what I mean? And you're not helping them either. Not if they're not taking responsibility for the things they should take responsibility for. And again, as I said earlier, how is it showing up in your intimate relationships? Are they getting mad? Are they feeling neglected? Because you're taking care of so many things and maybe not taking care of them enough? How are they feeling about that? So these roles have a lot of negative consequences as well. But again, I will tell you again, if you're happy in the role that you're playing, that's fine. But if you want to tweak it or change it, it takes work, it takes courage, and it takes the help of other people to do it. 
Many times you can't do it alone. So as we move on, I'm going to, uh, we're going to take a break in a little while, and then I'm going to come back to these five same roles. People, please, a caretaker, perfectionist, defiant role, and invisible role. We're going to talk about each individual way you could try and change these roles and be the person you want to be, not the person you were set up to be. Because those childhood messages are very, very powerful. And many times they're very destructive in different ways, especially to the person that's playing these roles. So we're going to take a quick break. Then we're going to come back and we're going to go over those three essentials I talk about in my book, self-awareness, action, and maintenance. Those are the three essentials if you want to change the role you're playing. And I'll get into detail with the five different roles that we're talking about. And I, I'll tell you now, my experience, I have a touch of all these roles. I push people away when I played, when I had to be right all the time. I was my mother's caretaker. My father was never around. And I lost my, myself in taking care of other people. I put my mother's feelings ahead of my own. I felt if I was going to be happy, I had to make her happy first. That's codependency. I was a people pleaser. I felt like something was wrong with me if I said no to others. I felt ashamed of myself. I was a perfectionist, never, ever celebrated anything I did. But boy, when I made a mistake, it stuck in my head forever. The invisible role is not one that I really could relate to too much, but I had a piece of all of these. So if you have a piece of all of these, stay tuned. We're going to take a break and let's figure out how to change the roles we were set up to play. Thank you. Welcome back to The Problem Was Me. And in the first part of the podcast, we spoke about the roles we set up to play in our childhood, especially when we go back to the holidays, our family of origin. For some reason, those triggers just come right out. We go back to mom and dad, sisters and brothers, and we go right back to being that little kid, little boy, little girl, and the roles we set up to play. And many times that creates a lot of stress. As we talked about, the holidays have a lot of stress in different areas, running around, shopping, traffic, like chickens without a head. But then there's the stress of going back to the family of origin. And that's what we're talking about in this podcast. And we're going to talk about how to make this a better holiday for you. How to deal with this family of origin stress and the role that you were set up to play early on. And if you have any questions, please Give me the questions on my email, thomasgagliano, nj at gmail.com. And if I can help you get through the holidays, please feel free to email me as well. So let's begin. As I said before, in my book, The Problem Was Me, I talk about three essentials, awareness, action, and maintenance. Without awareness, I don't know what actions to take. And without action, there's really nothing to maintain. So I got to consistently stay steady on changing the role. I can't go back and forth because that's not going to work. So let's start with growing in awareness. And that starts with understanding how I'm showing up. So what I tell my clients sometimes is take a piece of paper and a pen and write down what are the costs and what are the benefits of playing the role you're playing. If you feel you're a people pleaser, caretaker, perfectionist, if you play the invisible role, the perfectionist role, what are the pluses and what are the minuses in playing this role? Write it down. <laughs> write it on a piece of paper. Sometimes you write things on paper, we could see it clearer. Maybe that'll give you more motivation if indeed you do want to change the roles to say, wow, look at the bill I'm paying here. I want to change these roles. So the first thing is to build positive, uh, is to build awareness, really understanding how am I showing up? Maybe allowing a friend to help you, somebody you trust, not somebody judgmental. I call them witnesses. Ask them. Do you feel this way? Do you, do you see my blind spots? Whatever. Solicit help from other people. Ask them how you're showing up. The second piece is to take positive actions through awareness. That will give us a better indication on the choices and behaviors we should take. So taking positive actions. Now here it becomes a we process, not a me process. Sometimes it's tough to change these roles ourselves because we're blind to them. 
We need healthy people, people we trust, not negative people that are just going to knock you and tell you what you're doing wrong. Healthy people. And asking them, not asking them for help, but in a different way. I'll, this is, I'll, I encourage you to do it this way. Don't ask them, what should I do? I'm a people, please, I can't say no. Instead, ask them, what did they do? Can they relate to this? What did they do when they couldn't say no to somebody? What are some of the actions or behaviors that have helped them? When you ask people what they do rather than what you should do, it makes them think a little bit deeper. Hmm, what did I do? It's They go deeper than just saying, well, you know what you should do. So ask them, what did you do when you caretake people and you knew you should have gave them the responsibility, but you couldn't let go of that? What did you do as a perfectionist when you beat yourself up, when you know you shouldn't be doing that? Or how did you get your voice back in the invisible role? Ask them, what did they do? Okay, so that is what we need to do to take these positive actions in the second piece. Awareness first, taking positive actions. So asking them what they should do. But remember, ask trusting people. Don't ask people that are going to judge you or somebody that's negative. Ask people that you really don't want to help you. Tell them, listen, I'm struggling with saying no. I'm struggling with taking care of everybody. I'm struggling with my perfectionism. I'm struggling that I feel like my voice isn't heard. I'm struggling with my defiance. I just can't get there on time. I, I just don't like when people tell me what to do. or Whatever it is, go to your witnesses to get help. And the third piece is to maintain that consistently because it's not going to change unless you continue. And again, let your support group help you. If you there during the holidays and you're stressed out by some personality that, again, you want to throw the turkey leg at, stop and pause. Take a break. Call your support group. Call them on the phone if they're not there. Say, listen, I'm getting triggered. Take a walk outside. Take a little walk. Regain yourself. Because if you react, you're going to jump right back into that role. So let's talk about those roles. The people please a role. Obviously, saying no is really tough. And again, if I say yes, I'm not going to like myself. If I say no, I'm not going to like myself. It's tough. So again, solicit the help of other people. Say, listen, I just said no. They asked me to do something and they're taking advantage of me. And I said no, and I don't feel good about myself. Talk to people that, that will support you. Where they'll tell you what you may not hear in your own head, that commanding inner voice. They may tell you it's okay to say no. Take a breath. Calm down. It's all right. You took care of yourself. You did the right thing. You may not hear that in your own head, but that's why you need to develop witnesses in the action piece, the second piece that may give you what you may not hear within yourself. So those that have a problem saying no need to solicit help when they do say no. Let's go to the caretaker role. To change that role and make other people responsible for what they could be responsible for. And when you're afraid something's going to go wrong, again, solicit the help of others. Here's my fear. Here's the story I'm making up. If I don't do this, he won't do this or she won't do this. And everything's going to talk to your witnesses. Now, look, it may fall apart. They may not be able to do it as well as you do it, but that's okay. Let them learn and let you learn to surrender it. It's healthy for you and for them. And if you need help, go to professional, go to therapist, go to Al-Anon. I love Al-Anon, the three C's. I can't control it. I can't cure it. And I didn't cause it. Wonderful, wonderful advice. Because a lot of these roles, we fall into those three C's. I want to control things. I know I didn't cause things and I can't fix things. I can't cure it. Can't cure everybody. Not my job. So I like Al-Anon or codependency anonymous, even better, 12-step meeting, or getting a professional help. Because when you, as a caretaker, change these roles, they're not going to like it. You're going to be met with friction. Even if it's healthy and good for you and good for them, they're going to try to manipulate you back into going back to taking care of them. I guarantee that. So you got to stay strong. And you may not be able to stay strong by yourself. You may need other people to hold the fort for you. Perfectionist role, very similar to soliciting help from other people. Let them give you the positive voices that you're not going to hear. If I'm not perfect, I'm a failure. There's no gray area. Let them tell you you're doing well. It's okay. You don't have to be perfect. 
I'm here for you. So you have the voices that you may not be hearing from yourself. And you know what the voice for perfectionist is? You're human. You're a human being. We all stumble at times. Who doesn't? We all fail at times. But we don't have to think we're a failure when we do that. That perfectionist role is a tough role to break. You need to solicit the help of others and consistently call people until you start to believe it. What about the defiant role? Well, do you know, because you're always against everything that's said or not getting there at time, you're pushing people away. If you want to keep doing that, that's fine. But if you want to choose closeness instead of being right, make it your business to try and get to where you got to get to on time. Set the alarm, get out the door, set your clock for a half hour earlier than you have to make it. But do your best. Don't push people away. I know why you're doing it. I did it too. I came from a controlled childhood where I was told what to do all the time. And I was so defiant against anything people told me to do. You said black, I said white. You said up, I said down. I get it. But it's not helping you. You're not responsible for your childhood, but you are responsible for, for, for healing whatever wounds or messages you received. That's hurting you. So if you're playing that defiant role, try and change it. The invisible role. Some people lost their voice in childhood. They don't know how to express their feelings. They don't know how to express their needs. Some came from a big childhood where they got lost, whatever it is. You want to gain your voice back because you deserve it. You deserve to be heard. You deserve to be validated. And this is tricky to do something you don't know how to do it. My suggestion is a few things. Number one, stand in front of a mirror and rehearse what you want to say. Hey, I feel this way. I feel this way. I feel this way. Rehearse it. It's like a play. If you say it enough, it'll come out without you thinking about it. Another thing I tell the people that play that invisible role is... I tell them, I give them affirmations and I tell them to look at the affirmations. I deserve to be heard. I deserve to be happy and put those affirmations on individual index cards and stick them on the mirror individually, the bathroom mirror. And then when you go to the bathroom in the morning and you're brushing your teeth, brush with the opposite hand. If you're righty, brush with your left hand, vice versa. Why do I say that? Because your brain will focus more on those affirmations when you're reading them to yourself, when you're doing something uncomfortable or uncommon, your brain will focus more. So the more you say those things, I deserve to be heard, I deserve to be happy, the more it's going to push you to do what's so uncomfortable, and that is get your voice out. And again, when you get your voice out, some people might love it and some people might not, but that's too bad. We can't concern ourselves with everyone. We can't give that power to everyone to state how we feel about ourselves. We're the most important relationship in our lives. There's no relationship more important than the one you have with you. You're the key ingredient in, in all your happiness, the key common denominator in all the relationships we've talked about in this podcast. You are the common denominator. Take care of you first. And believe me, it's an amazing thing. When you take care of you first, everything's going to get better. Everything. So I hope this podcast can help you get through the holidays a little bit easier with a little less stress. Again, to be aware of how you're showing up, write it down on paper, solicit or we process other people to help you change those roles because it might be too tough to do it alone. And to maintain that change, consistently doing it until you feel more comfortable in this new role you're playing, a happier, better role. So join me the first uh, Tuesday. <laughs> I'll get this right. Join me the first Tuesday in December at 10 Pacific time for The Problem Was Me. Please email me. My podcast you could find on theproblemwasme.com. Uh, problem Was Me, anywhere you listen to podcasts. You, uh, iTunes, uh, Spotify, put in the search. The problem was me, and I have other podcasts on there. We're going to be talking in December about narcissism and codependency. That will be the next podcast. They fit hand in hand. Narcissists and codependents go hand in hand. We're going to talk about how to break that. Again, how to be the person you want to be to find happiness in your life. And then the, the second podcast in December we're going to talk about 
how to achieve our goals during the new year. Again, not easy, not easy. Some actions that'll help you in the new year be who you want to be. So I'm Tom Gagliano. Thank you for joining me. The problem was me. I hope this helped. And please come in contact with me if I can help you in any way. Thank you. You've been listening to The Problem Was Me with me, the host, Tom Gagliano. Tune in every first and third Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific time on the Transformation Talk Radio as I help you break the cycle of negative and addictive thinking, affecting the emotional intimacy you have, your parenting skills, the careers you choose, even the roles you were set up to play. As a high-profile leader in addiction and self-help, I've helped develop unique methods and procedures which have helped numerous institutions and individuals. For more information on how I can assist you creating a healthier life, visit theproblemwasme.com.